Good morning, and welcome to the First Church of Christ in Farmington, Connecticut. It's wonderful to be here this morning and to be worshiping with all of you. If you just found us on Facebook and you're worshiping with us for the first time, we extend a special welcome to you. And when we are no longer physically distancing, we hope you'll come by and introduce yourself and join us in worship then. We worship at 75 Main Street in Farmington, Connecticut, and we worship every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Hope to meet you soon. I'd like to say thank you to Sharon Alexander for her gift and donation of these beautiful flowers this morning. They are given with love and gratitude in the memory of her parents. And thank you, Sharon, for your great generosity. During this time of physical distancing, we encourage you to continue with your pledge if you are a pledging member of this congregation. You can do this in one of two ways. You can send a check to the church office at 75 Main Street in Farmington, Connecticut, or you can go online and use um, donate through our website. And our web page address is firstchurch1652.org. Again, that is firstchurch1652.org. We begin our service today knowing that tomorrow is Memorial Day the day that we gather and remember and honor all the men and women who have lost their lives in service to this nation. We look back to the past and we look forward to the future, to a future where we live together in peace and there is no more war. So let us pray for peace. God, let our lives be channels of your peace. Help us to have the eyes and the ears and the hearts and the hands and the feet that are your compassion and love and unity in this world that makes the path for peace. Let the words, let there be peace on earth, ring out in everything we do that this world will be more reflective of your kingdom and your grace. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Let us worship God.
Today's gospel reading is from John chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the word that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know the truth that I come from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are, are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that we are together today. And as you may or may not know, it is a holiday weekend. Now, right before children's time, we heard the scripture and there were a lot of glories and glorified and you and me and me and you. And it was a lot. Jesus was talking to God, saying a prayer, but sometimes it's hard to figure out exactly what he was saying. So as I was thinking about this weekend, and I was thinking about the scripture, I started to think about this little poppy. I've had this poppy for a very long time, so much so that when I took it off of my car, the little piece of paper came off, and you can see that it's been a little sun bleached. So I got this poppy years ago from a veteran outside of a grocery store. Now for me, this wasn't just any veteran. He was a member of the church that I worked at. And he had been in the military long, long time ago. And as I took this poppy, I knew that this one in particular was special. So let me tell you a little bit about pop these poppies. These particular poppies that we usually get on Memorial Day are made by veterans who are disabled or are in rehabilitation, which makes them pretty extra special. And poppies are a way to remember all of the people that have served in the military and have died. And I didn't know why, so I looked and poppies are one of the first flowers that grow in fields that used to be battlegrounds, which I think is a really neat sign of God's continuing and renewing love. But even more than that, when I think about all the people that receive the puppy, poppies and when we put them in our cars or maybe we wear them or we just keep them in little places, we are holding on to a reminder that glory 
glorifying is about more than talking about a flag that we might talk about old glory or having glory. Glory is about service to one another. It is about unity to one another. And it is about solidarity, which means standing up with one another. And I think there's no better symbol for that than this poppy. From the hands that make it, to the hands that pay, pass it out, to the hands that receive it. It is a constant reminder that there is glory in this world by us being united, by us serving one another, and by us being with each other. I think I'll have this for a long time. And I hope next year we'll get to pass them out again. And you too can have your poppy. Let us pray. Loving God, glory is a word that we often talk about, but perhaps we haven't dug deep for its meaning. It means service and unity and solidarity. Giving glory to you is to serve one another. Help us to remember that in everyday life, but especially when we see a poppy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Bye. What does glory look like? For Julia Ward Howe, the author of Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory of the Coming of the Lord, glory is a future experience with God returning to vanquish the enemies of justice. Now for Bruce Springsteen, he sang of glory days and glory, glory was a past experience that haunts you for years to come. And he wrote, time slips away, and leaves you with nothing but boring stories of glory days. And then there's Jesus and his prayer for glory.
Jesus is in the upper room when he prays for glory. Within hours, he will be betrayed and arrested and denied. His followers, followers will have scattered, and in short order, he will be headed towards the cross. He will not be honored. He will not ascend a throne or exhibit any great feat of strength. He will be imprisoned by the Roman government. He will um, quietly and simply and tragically make a journey to the cross. And in these very acts, he will make known the glory of God. And that, my friends, is what glory looks like. Vulnerability, solidarity, service, unity. In Christ, God puts God's, God's heart on the line, shares our common lot, weeps with us, dances with us, celebrates with us, eats with us, even accompanies us to death. God's glory is not in pulling away from us, but in drawing near to us. It is in not passing us by, but in stopping with us. Glory is found in solidarity with God's people. Glory risks heartbreak, betrayal, desertion, all in service to loving one another, to loving and healing in unity with God. Our human tendency is to associate glory with strength and winning in glory over rather than in glory with, in distinguishing oneself from others. The New York Times columnist David Brooks wrote a book several years ago called The Road to Character. In that book, he defined two different kinds of virtues. There's the eulogy virtue and the resume virtue. Now, the eulogy virtues are virtues that are usually remembered for at your funeral. And they are timeless virtues like compassion and generosity and bravery and kindness. And then there are resume virtues. And resume virtues are those skills that we bring to the marketplace and are often the signs of our external success. The truth is that, that while we know that the eulogy virtues matter, our whole culture is oriented to the resume virtues. We try to get the right amount of education and certificates and work experiences in order to distinguish ourselves and to make ourselves shine with glory. And then over time, the shine wears off the halo. We have to face the fact that we fall short, that there is always someone better, stronger, more distinguished, we discover that we may disappoint and experience disappointment. Our body or our mind fails us. Our relationships don't go as we thought. Or maybe even we discover we aren't exactly the person we had hoped we would be. And the lies that we've been telling ourselves to keep ourselves going begin to fall to pieces and we face our mortality our humanity, our vulnerability. And hopefully, we discover the glory of God then, right there, in our midst, waiting for us to reach out a hand in love, in grace, in community. Prior to the birth of her daughter, Dorothy Day, the Catholic social activist, led a somewhat disorganized life, in and out of relationships, jobs, and issues, running from pillar to post, trying to find some way to make her mark, to distinguish herself in the world as a writer and as a social activist. She was out there seeking her glory. Then she gave birth to her daughter, Tamar, and she wrote, if I had written the greatest book, composed the greatest symphony, painted the most beautiful painting, or carved the most exquisite figure, I could not have felt 
the more exalted creator than I did when they placed that child in my arms. From that day on, Day's efforts changed from the goal of distinguishing herself to the goal of love, of solidarity with service to others. She developed the Catholic worker movement. She became an advocate for the inherent dignity of all people and especially of our most vulnerable poor. Some might say that the glory of God found day. So you don't need to achieve God's glory in the places of power or in the palaces of the mighty. Instead, let me tell you what glory looks like today. It looks like people finding ways to love one another, together in service to one another and to the most vulnerable. It looks like the frontline worker holding the hand of a dying patient, silently crying, knowing the family cannot be with this patient. It looks like the sanitation worker and the trucker going to work day in and day out, committed to keep a healthy world for all of us. It looks like the millions of people who stay home in service to the most vulnerable among us. It looks like the lines of hungry people lining up for food and the ingenious, resourceful food pantry volunteers working with them. And it looks like us becoming the church deployed, worshiping in our homes, finding ways to support one another from our homes, all for the most vulnerable among us. Now that is God's glory. And for that, we can say, hallelujah.
Well, it's been a joy and a pleasure to be here and worship with you this morning. I hope you'll join us at 1130 for Zoom coffee hour. Um, and the link can be found in the email that was sent out this morning and also at the church Facebook page. So come by and have a chat with all of us. And now as we depart from this service, I urge you to go forth to love one another, to serve one another, and to shine with the glory of Christ. Go forth with the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen.